Hi, I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. But you're invited, so come on, let's go. It'll be fun. Okay, today it's going to be a three card oracle. Um, with a uh, diet uh, cross uh, divination for for each of those three cards. So there's going to be three cards that you can pick. I don't know that there'll be yes or no cards. So you might want to think of a question, really get it formed in your mind, and then the three cards will be significant to the diet cross that uh, defines them uh, later. Okay, so here we go. Three-card oracle, you pick. Well, it's going to be a three-card oracle you pick today. I'm going to use this past these past life Oracle Cards by Doreen Virtue and Brian L. Weiss, M.D. And uh, these have turned out to be very useful cards. They're not yes-no cards. They're really sort of uh, almost, um, like they say, past life. Um, I just use them to sort of determine the direction of the uh, dyadic cross uh, that comes later. And I tell you what, I'm loving that the art on these cards perfectly blends into the art in this deck, which is what we're going to use to do the dyadic cross divination. This is the Impressionist tarot by Corinne Kenner and art artwork by Arturo Pica. So I'm going to show you these cards first uh, and then um, we'll do the uh, the pull. So these past life cards, they were actually quite expensive if I remember correctly and I was really underwhelmed with the size of them and the quality of the cards. However, the artwork on the cards is pretty good and I think there must have been lots of nights in tension <clears throat> that went into creating these cards because they always seem to add to the uh, drawing and are very meaningful. It takes a little uh, thought to make these work for you. So, um, and as you may know, if you watch me a lot, that I spread these cards out so that you can get a look at them in the beginning. I kind of hope that this uh, imbibes uh, your energy into the draw and uh, we'll see uh, how this works today for this three card oracle you pick. So get your question really for foremost in your mind bring it to the front and uh, decide uh, what it is that you need to get some clearance on now but before I uh, do the divination with these cards I'm going to show you also the ones that we'll use for the dyadic cross uh, this is the impressionist tarot Corinne Kenner Arturo Pica cool box nice little uh, magnetic clasp I'm just such a sucker for those boxes uh, it has a really great uh, booklet that tells you all about the cards and the art that's in, involved six uh, impressionist artists uh, well four impressionist artists and uh, two post impressionists and then the cards themselves are they're you know what they suffer the same situation as these cards they're a terrific idea but the cards themselves are kind of cheap. They're kind of cool because on the back, it looks like the back of a, of a piece of art, of a, of a painting that you would hang on the wall. The little shims that keep the painting in place, maybe some little tape in there. And then the uh, art on the other side are famous, uh, are compilations of uh, famous art that uh, you would see in a museum. Um, we're going to spread these out so that you can take a look at them. I think they're terrific cards. And, uh, and uh, so while I'm doing this is really the perfect time to sort of think of what it is that you want to um, clarify in your life. And how can these cards uh, help you do that? So that's what we have here. So we're going to scoop these up. And then I'm going to put them aside. And then we'll start in on the um, Oracle cards first. And then flesh it out with a, a six card a diet at cross later. So, hope you're having a great day. Um, I'm having a good day. Of course, all my days are usually pretty good. Thank, thank God. Knock on wood. Where's my head? I'm knocking on my head. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to put these to the side for now, and we'll do the uh, Oracle card draw with these Oracle cards. Okay, so while I'm doing the shuffle, Really, really, really consider what is it that, uh, where do you need direction in your life today? Today, what are three areas that would uh, be meaningful for you to have some insight to? Or if that's too much for you, pick one or two. But just uh, decide what is it that uh, you would like to see uh, addressed in this uh, uh, three-card oracle today. And um, I'll do my very level best to um, see to it that we get there, okay? I'm going to spread these out. We're going to take three. This is one. This is two. 
and then this is three. So simple, easy peasy, you know, no drama. The three cards that we have here are going to be one, two, three. You can stop the tape if you need to. One, two, three. You really want to think about what you're doing. Maybe take a deep breath. Ease your mind. Three, two, one, one, two, three. Okay? So now we're going to reveal these cards one at a time. If you chose number one, this is Father. This is a lovely card. Look at this. You have um, the, the baby grasping. I mean, this is this the most precious thing? Any parent, I'm not a parent, but I, but I have had th this experience, uh, and many of us have. It's just the most precious thing that, that dependent, uh, trusting uh, little soul, uh, trusting you to guide them um, uh, where, you know, where they need to go, what they need to do, just feeling secure in the comfort of the Father's hand. So Father is the number one. If you chose number two, uh, this card is transportation. That's interesting. Wow, what a switch. So transportation. Um, you can think of this as, um, I guess, simply just what it says. Uh, getting from one place to another, uh, a means of transforming uh, yourself from one place to another. And this it cannot be just literal, not just literal transportation from point A to point B, but maybe a transportation of your journey, transportation of your soul's dream, a transportation of uh, your your life's path at this moment. So transportation. And then the final card is going to be number three. If that's what you choose, oh boy, unrequited love. That is such uh, a sensitive, touchy, uh, hurtful situation. You know, unrequited love is a blend of the beautiful emotions of love, of falling in love and having beautiful feelings for someone, and then uh, the suffering of not uh, uh, having that feeling returned. So those are the three cards, and we're going to put them back over here. Put these cards away, just because we, you know, I've had a limited space here. And I'd like to have as much space as possible to do the uh, diet at cross. So put these away. Now uh, for the Impressionist uh, Tarot. These cards are fantastic. I love these cards. They're everything artsy that, that pulls a string in me, that, that rings a bell. And uh, I just wish they were on a better quality of cardstock. But I guess I should quit uh, harping on that. It's uh, kind of like saying, um, oh, I don't know what, like what I'm having for dinner when there are people out there who aren't having any dinner whatsoever. So, you know, the Impressions Tarot. Let's really zone in on this. We'll do a separate shuffle and draw for each of those three cards. So take this time to clarify in your mind, you know, what it is that you need answered in this Diet at Cross. This is going to be for card number one, which, of course, is Father. Father, how are these cards going to help us uh, divine the meaning of that card? So this is going to be six cards. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Put these away. We're not going to need them at all right now. Let them work on that energy. And then see how is Father going to... What answers are we going to get for Father in this in this divination? Okay, really, really uh, rest your mind and uh, let's do this together. The signifier card for Father is um, the Two of Wands. You know, the Two Wands are planning, are uh, movement, fire, uh, motion, and uh, the Two of Wands is sort of short-term planning, sort of getting uh, our our ideas together and uh, and thinking about. How we're going to move forward. Um, so we want to tie this to the uh, Oracle card. I'm not sure how to do that yet. Just have to be honest with you. And uh, so, But the signifier for this reading then is uh, the Two of uh, Wands, and that is Father. Two of Wands is a signifier card. Planning. Okay. The challenge to that then is going to be the Queen of Wands. So the Queen of Wands. Um, interesting that we have a Queen uh, which seems to me in opposition. <sighs> Queen of Wands almost seems in opposition to Father, doesn't it? So, if the challenge to making plans 
is the Queen of Wands, who the Queen of Wands is is really in complete control of getting this action going. She's very high up in the court cards. Um, so this almost pits mother against father, the feminine against masculine. It strikes me that this card, I've read the description of this card uh, as far as the, the artwork is, is concerned, and this is actually uh, a female here. So we've got double female energy uh, challenging father. Gonna have to keep on going. The basis of this reading then is, well, of course, conflict. The five of wands, and look at all these wands, 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 wands. The five of wands is always about uh, conflict, um, not being able to get a clear uh, um, direction where you're going here. And these cards, this is the first example we have of a masculine energy in this dyadic cross because we have two uh, gentlemen here who seem to be uh, enforcement officials of some sort. This guy has a sword on his hip. Uh, these are all men here challenging the, the authority, I, I suppose you would say, of these two um, either soldiers. Well, they would have to be soldiers because they have a sword. They wouldn't be uh, police officers. So this is really a mix of energy in this read. This is going to be a complicated read today, I can tell. And I may have to take this out to a full uh, Celtic cross, I'm feeling like. So, so far, I'm sorry, but I don't have an answer for uh, what is the clear definition of this. We're going to go to the past. To the past of this reading is ah, a tower, a tower moment. You know, I'm just going to have to jump into this and make some assumptions. All right, so we're, we're concentrating on father today. There are a lot of people who have very complicated issues uh, or with their father figures uh, that are in or maybe not in their lives. And um, so as a signifier of that, we have the two of wands, which is really uh, making short-term plans. This is a, a female holding the moon uh, which, which talks about secrets and intuition. And so this uh, two of wands is challenged then by a queen of wands who is a very strong uh, figure in making plans. So this uh, uh, short-term planning is challenged by very strong uh, intuition for, for making things go a certain way. And the basis of all of this is the conflict, is the, um, the uh, discourse um, having to do with all this. This is a, a familiar family uh, situation and comes from the past of a big tower moment that led to maybe the discovery or the um, uh, revelation of, of this uh, uh, discourse. In the sky for this reading then, is going to be the Seven of Swords. And the Seven of Swords, again, is um, a theft, a betrayal. Uh, this fella has picked up all these truths and is just walking off with them, uh, plain as day, um, you know, uh, going to make off with all the truths, all the laws, all the rules uh, that have been established for this home. Uh, this fella is leaving with them. I wonder if this is abandonment that we're talking about here. And then in the... Um, um, outcome for this dyadic cross we have the seven of coins which the seven of coins is always wondering have I done enough and this is a, a, a single female um, this is definitely a mom dad conflict so I would say in this father figure we're wanting the security the guidance that we would expect uh, anybody would get from a father we didn't get it we didn't get it at all and the short-term plans and that this is an abandonment issue, uh, definitely 100%. So I'm sorry it may not be applied to all of you, but for those of you who do feel some of this, so uh, this is a father figure wanting to have it, looking for that guidance. The plans had to be made without him, okay? It moved forward in a strong way because mom was left to make those decisions. There was so much conflict be, uh, in the masculine energy of this situation, and it uh, resulted in a tower moment, which could have been a family breakup. The father, it looks like in this case, just uh, made an escape, took his truths, took his, his, his justice and rules, and left and fled the scene. And that left uh, the female energy wondering, have I done enough? And you know what? I'm going to have to go ahead and finish out this, uh, di uh, this to a Celtic cross. The self, the self, the self of who you are right now, I believe that's what we're looking for. The self is going to be in this card, which is the uh, Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune tells us that whatever our upbringing is, there is some uh, element of luck, of, of a predetermined destiny that uh, is, is we have to believe 
is going to take over and uh, lead us in the direction we have to go. These horses can only run in one direction around the track. One or the other of them is going to come in uh, first, second, and third, but they're all going in the same direction, and they're all finishing the race. Okay, so let's remember that. Whatever our conflict is in our personal life, we're in the race, and we're going to finish it. You know, whether we finish first, second, or third may not even be as important to these participants. These horses don't care whether they come in first, second, or third. They just like to get the run, to get the thing done. They're excited about taking this journey. So that's the self right here. That could be a little guidance for you, is to clearly understand that these uh, issues um, are really, really so determining your life, but they're almost secondary because we're in the race, and we're running the race, and we're going to finish the race regardless of how we come out of it. Um, the um, environment that that's in then is going to be um, the Nine of Swords. And the Nine of Swords is nightmares. And, you know, if we have some abandonment issues, this is a very valid uh, uh, challenge to us uh, in this uh, regard. It can even be an inspiration uh, to us um, as we uh, ponder uh, what might have been or what will be. Um, the uh, hopes and the fears then for this is going to be, um, this is the finish. This is the universe. This is the world. This is the end of the journey. This is the uh, the end of the fool's journey, the 21 in the major arcana. So again, just like I said, uh, this race is going to be run and it's going to come to a conclusion. And then the, the final outcome for all of this is going to be the Ten of, of Wands. And the Ten of Wands uh, speaks to us of, um, oh gosh, my mind just went blank. Ten of Wands is going to tell us that... Um, you know, there's a lot of responsibility, there are burdens, there's oppression, there's obligations. We may want to be a perfectionist. I happen to know that this is a, a painting of a prostitute of the day, which is a very controversial uh, painting to do at that time because only nobles or rich people or important people would have their pictures painted. And I forget who the uh, painter is of this, of this but uh, he decided to put a common uh, person in there just to show that we all um, uh, deserve uh, that attention, no matter how we came to be. So that's what I have to say. Understand that if you've had some abandonment, if you've had some male, female energy, it doesn't even have to be actually a man or, or a woman that is the deserter. It's the male and female energy because we each have both of that. And understand that once the race is run, uh, it, it will be run. We're going to run the race and get to the end. We can't stop that. Uh, well, I guess we can. We can end the race anytime we want to. But that's uh, against God's will. Uh, hate, uh, sorry to inflict my uh, personal beliefs in there, but that's just how I feel. And uh, we're all important in uh, the supreme being's eyes. So that's what I have for this for this reading. That left me a little um, a little um, contemplative there. Okay, so number two, the number two card in this oracle pick is going to be transportation. Transportation. You know, this reminds me. Uh, back in the day when uh, Australia uh, was a first um, a possession, uh, however you want to, uh, however it's actually determined that uh, there came to be part of the uh, uh, United Kingdom, is um, if you prefer, if you uh, did something wrong, if you uh, had broken the law, one of those punishments you could get was what they called transportation, and that just meant they sent you from uh, the British Isle to um, usually. Australia. There may have been other outposts that they would send you to in this uh, transportation punishment, but this was that was one of them. So transportation. So moving from one place to another in so many ways, physically, spiritually, mentally, and once you get there, uh, how are you going to um, uh, turn that uh, into your life? Well, it doesn't matter how you're going to turn it into your life because it's going to become your life. That's all there is to it. So transportation, transportation, the movement of our uh, selves through uh, the experience. That is our, our lives. And we're all going through this experience together. We're all coming to the end. And we're all uh, uh, hopefully not wasting our journey, but making it a useful, a profitable, um, and not speedy journey. Let's take a train instead of a jet. What do you say? That's what I say. I mean, if that's the case, I think I'd rather walk and make it last as long as possible. So we're going to take six cards out of here for transportation. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, and six. Transportation. We're going to put this over here. We're going to see how these cards will help us determine uh, 
uh, transportation. The signifier card for this reading, then, ah, that's very interesting. This is the Fool, and uh, it's, it's so appropriate because we're talking about a journey, and this is the beginning of a journey right here. So the beginning of the journey, and anytime that journey um, takes off, it's fraught with peril. I mean, you can fall off one side of this wall to, uh, you know, uh, more peril. You can fall off the other side into a bed of flowers. But, you know, we don't want to fall off at all. We want to stay on the path. We want to make a successful journey. And uh, so uh, the fool's journey um, having to do with transportation seems like this has got to shape up uh, very uh, well. The um, challenge to transportation, then, is uh, the Ten of Cups, which is uh, typically is... Uh, uh, talking to us about family, about uh, and family would speak to us of our goals. We have goals for our families, whether it's to just to get them grown up. You know, that's just the base, just to keep the kids alive. As a parent, you know, that's that's your major concern. Let me keep my family going. Let me keep my kids alive. Let me make this family uh, a, a happy, prosperous union. So the challenge to this journey is um, ending up in a good place. And then the uh, basis of this reading is. The Queen of Pentacles, the Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles, Pentacles speak to me of value, of our value, not our monetary value so much, but of what we uh, bring to our game and then what we bring to the game of those that we uh, uh, interact with. So the basis of this reading is recognizing uh, that we are so much in charge of our value. You know, this is the Queen. She's not the most the most um, uh, authoritative figure in the court cards, because that would be, of course, the king. But we have to reserve the king for the universe. The universe determines uh, what's going to happen uh, overall, but we're right next to it, because we, there's a path, I believe, that we're, we're on, and then we have to decide, are we going to go left, right, stall, jump ahead? What is our path going to be? So the queen of value is, uh, is the basis of all of this reading regarding transportation. Now, oh, and I love it when the cards start to repeat. That For me, that tells me that the cards are in sync. They know that I'm doing a reading, and they're wanting to show up. So, again, this is the Ten of uh, Wands. And the Ten of Wands, just reminding us, when we talk about value, we all have equal value in our journey. We all have equal value, um, no matter who we are. And it, it's, it will do us well to remember that, that uh, everyone you meet, the beggar in the street, the rude person, the thief, um, the priest, uh, the nurse, uh, all those folks that you meet who sometimes you may think they're inconsequential, but everybody has value. Somebody at some point loved, was loved by someone. Even those children that were given up for adoption, even those children that were uh, abandoned or abused, at some point there was a spark of love, there was a spark of compassion, there was a spark of emotion that started that. And uh, we all have equal, equal value in our journey OK, the um, sky of this reading, then what we can hope for is the yeah, of course it is. It's the six of uh, is the, the six of the major arcana, which are the lovers and the lovers uh, tell us that the companionships we make along the way, not just the very intimate uh, relationships that we have, but all the companionships, all the partnerships that we meet along the way of our journey are contributing to uh, to uh, where we're going and how we're uh, coming out in the end. So the lovers, I think it's a lovely um, card to have in the sky there. And then the uh, final outcome for this is going to be the Ace of Swords. And that's a perfect end to this reading because the Ace is the great big gift and the Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, um, Laws. Uh, but I feel in this way, it's more about the truths. And we need to understand the truths of our journey is that we all are love. So I like that for that reading, Transportation. The message, the guiding light is, speaking of love, unrequited love. I, I, I'm such a bird brain. I forget what the cards are as soon as I put them down uh, or put them out of my mind. But unrequited love, I had not remembered that that's what that card was. So unrequited love. And look, these cards don't want to shuffle. It kind of tells me that maybe um, they like where they are. But no, I'm going to get some very specific. I want to have a very uh, uh, individualized determination for unrequited love. Okay, so unrequited love. We're going to take six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, we think of unrequited love as the sufferer, the person who uh, is not uh, getting 
the response to their affections or their attentions uh, that they want. But let's remember that uh, for unrequited love, that requires two parties, one person to have the longing and the other person to uh, not respond to it. And you may be either one of those. So, and you may not even recognize if you're the, the one who those attentions are focused at, that uh, that, that love for, of someone else for you is going unrequited. Very interesting. So the signifier card for this, look at that. Just like I said, uh, this tells me that these cards understand that I'm reading them and they're bringing me this message. So the two of wands, again, is planning. So unrequited love, planning. How did those two things come together? Well, we're in charge of our destinies. If you're uh, feeling as if your love is not returned, then why don't you think about your plan? Maybe you need to make a plan to make your, your uh, feelings better known, or maybe you need to understand that your feelings are not being returned and, and uh, make the appropriate move uh, in that case. Okay, don't beat a dead horse. Uh, the challenge to these plans, these short-term plans, really, is um, the Two of Cups. And, you know, the Two of Cups um, speaks to, gosh, um, communication, just what I was saying, and also um, friendship, joy, love. It's represented in this card by these two reflecting ponds. And so let's let's take a minute and, um, and look at uh, what we have before us and contemplate it and see uh, if we're going uh, in a direction that's the most appropriate for us at this moment, okay? The basis of this reading, then, is the um, the magician. Okay, it's magic. Uh, love in any form, unrequited or otherwise, is magic. We are love. We are. That is who we are, period, at our core. If you don't believe that, then please, I'll take maybe the whole rest of this day and meditate on that and understand that you are love and you have to love yourself and you have all the tools available to do that the magician is uh, a fantastic card to be the base because it shows us that we're in complete control we have what we need to make this life a better one we just have to uh, understand it and move in that direction unrequited love you might have unrequited love for yourself the past of this reading look at that again is the lovers you know this reading today has been all about the journey and love um, well what, what else can I say about the lovers is that, you know, their companionships, they're uh, looking each other in the eye, maybe looking at yourself in the eye, because we all have these two sides of ourselves. We have the masculine and we have the feminine. And uh, let's look at ourselves in the mirror. Look at the man or the woman in the mirror and, and come to a truth about who you are. Sometimes we need to look at our naked self to uh to to really get a full understanding of who we are and to have some compassion and love for ourselves we don't realize what we've done to ourselves if we look at ourselves in the mirror i would encourage everybody strip off your clothes go to the biggest mirror you have in your house and just stand there in front of it and look at yourself every inch turn around twist around try to see yourself from every angle you possibly can get completely comfortable with your body we're not we cover it up we hide it we don't, when we get dressed in the morning we only look at, at our heads and we don't uh, consider what is the rest of us but guess what the whole world doesn't just see our heads the whole world sees all of us the world knows who you are regardless of who you're trying to um, uh, portray yourself as the sky for this reading then is the um, night of wands. The Knight of Wands is motion, action, power. He's a warrior. He's bringing this action to front. And uh, let's look for the Knight of Wands in our life and pay attention to what he's telling us to do. And then the likely outcome for all of this is moving out of troubled waters. This is, the, well, not really moving out of troubled waters. I'm sorry, I've misinterpreted. This is the Nine of uh, Wands. And the Nine of Wands is really having been through the battle. This fellow is trying to decide, how the heck am I going to get this thing, all this mess that I've got, all these plans that I'm having my way. I don't know how I'm, I'm floating on this ocean and I'm, I'm undirected and I need to pick up an oar and put it in the water and move. So that's this divination. Well, that was the, uh, the three-card oracle today. I hope it was useful to you. Um, had lots of interruptions today. I don't know if you can tell, but um, things are happening in my home, and I'll have to actually stop the camera and deal with that and then try to come back. And So I hope it's seamless for you. I always like to do these draws in one long uh, video so that there's no interruptions and there's no question about uh, how the cards are pulled. But anyway, 
I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Thank you so very, very much for watching my channel. It means an awful lot to me. It really does. Thank you. Thank you very much. But come back tomorrow because I'm going somewhere else and so you can come too. What are you doing? Nothing? Let's go. Ciao for now.